Hey, everybody. Welcome to Hands on Mac. I'm Leo Laporte. We continue our series on how to get the Mac to bend to your will. This time, we're going to show you some cool keyboard tricks. Stay tuned. Hands on Mac comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether they're working in the office or remotely, visit LastPass.com slash Twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Mac is brought to you by LastPass. Visit LastPass.com slash Twit. Hello, everybody. Welcome to yet another episode of Hands on Mac, getting the Mac to do your bidding. This time we're going to go back to our good friend, the Keyboard System Preference Pane. Man, you can do a lot with this guy. And we're going to show you, first of all, how to get it to autocomplete or shortcuts. Now, I have used uh, a lot of third-party programs to do this. But the truth is, Mac OS is very capable when it comes to expanding abbreviations. Go to your keyboard preference pane, go to the second tab in, and text. This is where Mac stores all your autocompletes. What? And there are quite a few. You can add your own. There's some that it comes with, like parenthesis C, parenthesis for copyright, parenthesis P, parenthesis for P. I guess that's, what, what is that, parv? Uh, R, T, M. You can add your own. You see, I've added my name, dash LL for Leo Laporte. I use at at for my email address. Now, it's key that you choose abbreviations. You're not going to type in any other context, right? Because every time you type at at on this Macintosh, it's going to put my email address in. I can even, and this is one I use a lot, replace OMW with on my way. You see it also do fractions. Find some that you want to replace it with. There's a lot of cool stuff. I'll show you real quickly how it, uh, how it replaces it. by. Uh, let's open a, a copy of Notepad here. Dash, dash, LL, right? And now when I press space, you see it's already suggesting the autocorrect. This is your last chance to change your mind. As soon as I press space, at, at, it says, I know what that is. And it's going to replace that with my email address. One slash two, it says that's a half, and on and on and on. I like TM. You can do it with emojis. You can do it with a variety of things, but the key is you got to put it in here first with keyboard. As long as we're inside the keyboard system preference pane, there's a couple other things I'd like to show you. Let's stay here and notice you can have it automatically capitalize proper nouns. I don't turn that on. One I do like, though, is if you ever type a double space, it'll go period space instead. Nice way to end a sentence. These are these are kind of cribbed from your phone and portable devices. I like smart quotes and dashes. If the application supports that, it'll do it. And by the way, those are language specific, so you can do it in a variety of other languages depending on how uh, your smart quotes would work in your language. I think that's a great feature. A couple of other things I do when I first set up a new Macintosh when I go to a keyboard, I always click this modifier keys. Do you use the caps lock key? Are you a fan? I always hit it by accident, and all of a sudden I'm typing in caps. Also, because I use uh, a lot of terminal programming commands, I would like an extra control key. So one of the first things I always do is I map my caps lock to control. So... From now on, instead of putting me in all caps, it'll just be as if I've hit the control key. On Macs that don't have an escape key, those touch bar, older touch bar Macs, you might want to make that your escape key. So it's nice to be able to remap uh, these keys. You can also restore the defaults if you're afraid you're confusing yourself. So that's a handy little feature. It's good to look at uh, this keyboard control panel. It's kind of one of the first things I do when I set up a new Mac. Add my abbreviations, turn off the caps lock key. Uh, there are other things you might want to do uh, with this feature. For instance, uh, if you want to make a keyboard shortcut that will launch an app. These keyboard shortcuts are fantastic. There's a whole bunch of them in the third tab in. You'll see a ton of them. Last week, remember, we used this for services, not only to give keyboard shortcuts, but even to turn services on. There are a lot of services that are off by default. You might want to browse through these and, and see if there's anything 
you could use, for instance, um, you know, emailing a selection, selection of text, you select it, it'll email it, that's in the services menu, but you could even add a keyboard shortcut for that. So you'll see there are a lot of shortcuts that are not turned on, and a lot of them not assigned to keys. That's very handy. One of the few things that's, or actually there's quite a few things in here that you can't do. One of the things you might want to do is say, for instance, I'd like a, I, I use Apple Mail all the time. I'd like a keyboard shortcut for Apple Mail. Well, you won't find that here, but you can easily make one with a program called Automator. Now, I mentioned this last week. I'll show you a little bit more of Automator this week, and then we'll do a whole Automator. Uh, actually, we'll probably have to do several episodes. But this is the, the quick version of that. If you want to have a keystroke that launches an application or a process, something you do all the time, make a quick action in Automator. Quick actions are workflows that can be added to the Finder, Touch Bar, or the Services menu. And of course, because they can be added to the Services menu, you can also give them your own custom keystroke. So let's do that. This is going to create a new Automator document. And in this case, we're going to say, uh, Workflow receives no input. We don't need any input. We just really wanted to do one thing, which is launch an application. This, in Automator, these are all the commands, and there are a lot of them. Fortunately, they're in alphabetical order, so it's easy to find the one we want, which is launch application. I'm going to drag that over here, and I'm going to choose the application. We're, in effect, going to make a quick action, action that launches the application I want to launch. What was it? Mail? All right. Now, that is a quick action. I've made it in Automator. You saw how easy that was. I can now just save that in Automator. And let's call it Launch Mail. So I've saved it, and it's already added to my Services menu. So as you can see in the Finder, I've got it there as a thing. If I just do this, it'll launch the email program. Boom. Just like that. Let's close that out. So I had to relaunch it to get it to show up in shortcuts. But now, if I go to Services and I go to the very end to General, there it is. There's my shortcut. It's already enabled, and I can even add a keystroke to that. So I don't know, Command, Option, Control, M. How about that? So now, when I press Command, Option, Control, M, I've created my own keyboard shortcut, and using Automator, I made that keyboard shortcut launch mail. I'll press it and see what happens. There it goes, mail launches. So that's how you can have uh, a custom keystroke to launch an application. But as you can see, since you can use Automator, you can have it launch an Automator action. There's pretty much the sky's the limit. You can make custom keyboard keystrokes or services menus entries that do pretty much everything. I think what we need to do is spend some time, maybe maybe we'll do that uh, next week, looking at Automator. Automator is probably, I'm going to guess, not going to stick around much longer. But as long as they put it in the Mac, I think it's a great tool to know about, a great tool to use. And it really does speed up certain things. If there's something you do all the time, being able to say, all right, let's make that be an Automator quick action and let's add a keystroke for it. That really can speed up your productivity. So that's something really good to know. That's the keyboard uh, system preference pane. There's a lot of good source uh, stuff in there. We did, as you may remember, a couple of weeks ago, talk about using dictation. Uh, not much to do with input sources. I think it's these first three tabs are the most important. Um, keyboard, and I did point. I should point out that you can use it to put the emoji viewers in the menu bar. That's kind of handy text where you can have text abbreviations and shortcuts and then the shortcuts tab where you can actually add keystrokes and services uh, to your Macintosh things you might want to do along there you have it hands on Macintosh using the keyboard system preference pane our show today brought to you by LastPass your IT department has a big job with more devices and applications and now remote workforces all with new threats and regulations 
Well, it makes strong security extremely complex. LastPass unifies access and authentication. It increases security, and it doesn't impact productivity. LastPass uses the same encryption type, AES-256, used by banks and the military. You know you're getting strong security. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. All right. I've dug my own grave. Next week, we'll start our Automator sessions. There's a lot to say about Automator, but I'll give you a few handy tips. Thanks for joining me. I'm Leo Laporte. I'll see you next Friday on Hands on Mac. Bye-bye. Hey, folks, it's Micah Sargent here, co-host of Smart Tech Today right here on Twit.tv. Every single week, Matthew Casanelli and I sit down to talk about Smart Tech for the week. That's right. It can get kind of complicated, but there's a lot of news out there. There's a lot of products to dig through. There are a lot of questions to answer, and we try to do that all every single week. From voice assistants to wearables to smart garage door openers and lights, there's so much to cover and, well, so little time. So be sure to check it out. It's twit.tv slash STT. Huh, that rhymes.